Good morning and welcome. This is the Clearview Community Church Kindersley online service for August 29th. We've been looking forward to joining with you this morning. A special thanks to all of you who attended last week's service and have been willing to work with our Saskatchewan Health Guidelines regarding close contact with a person who has tested positive with COVID-19. This service today is a further response towards the spirit of those guidelines. We're going virtual. We welcome each of you who is able to attend. Let's begin with prayer. Our Father God, we invite you to be with us during our time together this morning. This is our desire. We don't come to merely fulfill a duty or to look good to others. Our invitation to you is a sincere cry to enliven this time with your spirit, fill our minds with the mind of Christ, and let us be open to follow you wherever you would lead us. We pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Now, those of you that know me know that I just love to sing. And so we're going to try doing some of that singing this morning. It's going to be a cappella, and it'll be very interesting. I invite you to sing along. Uh, you can do that if you're in your rocking chair, if you're on the road, uh, wherever you are this morning, just feel free to join in and to sing as well. I thought today I would uh, see if we could sing a medley of songs using the first verses only. As a youth, that was one of my favorite things that I used to do was hang out with a bunch of kids and sing along, enjoy. We usually just sang one verse. We'd be driving in a car. We'd be doing something else. And so I invite you to join me this morning. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our song shall rise to thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Father, I adore you, lay my life before you, how I love you, Jesus, I adore you, lay my life before you, how I love you. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, O oh, my soul rejoice. Take joy, my King, in what you hear. May it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. God is our refuge and God is our strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore I will not fear, though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Let's try that one more time. God is our refuge and God is our strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore I will not fear, though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Hide me now, 
rise and thunders roar I will soar with you above the storm Father you are king over the flood I will be still and you are God I will be still know you are God be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Last week, we had the great opportunity of having Grant Cotton join us. As he spoke, he spoke about worry and fear in a world that we live in right now. Today, I want to take you to the opportunity to read from and hear from Psalm 46. If you have your Bibles with you, just read along or just listen. As you read through the Psalms, you'll notice that there's a, in Psalm 46, if you've already got that open, and I will pull up those first few verses of uh, Psalm 46 for you. In those first few verses, after the ending of this part, there is what's called sila. There's no real great definition, but there is a good idea that that was a point at which you stopped, you thought about, and you took a break. And so we're going to invite you this morning to to use that as part of the readings. I will read the scripture and then I will comment a little bit on the scripture. Then we'll take a sila, and then we'll move on to the next scripture reading, take a sila, and then we'll move on to the next scripture reading and take another sila. There's three sections and my wife will be reading each of those scripture readings as we come to them. Now it's interesting at the beginning of this particular passage, you'll find that there is what's called a note to the choir leader. And it says, for the Alamoth voices, or as in some translations, for the sopranos. Alamoth really was a word for childbearing women. So this psalm was really put together for women to sing, and particularly childbearing women. And in a day and age, where having children is scary. This is a song that childbearing women need to hear as well as the men and all of us. And so I invite you just to sit back and listen as we hear from Psalm chapter 46, the first three verses. Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. So we will not fear when earthquakes come and the mountains crumble into the sea. Let the oceans roar and foam. Let the mountains tremble as the waters surge. People must have in that day and age known what earthquakes were. They would know what the ocean could do. It's not unlike what we encounter nowadays. We talk about climate change and we talk about all of the things that are happening around us. A number of people feel that, well, we can make things change. We can change the world. We can change this environment. We need to get involved. We need to be the savior of the world. There are others who also see climate change happening and maybe are not as excited about what possibly could happen or how much we can actually make a difference with. A man by the name of Tom Brooks, professor of law and government at Durham University and author of Climate Change Ethics for an Endangered World, says we must learn to live an ever, in an ever-changing environment where we aim to reduce our exposure 
to the risk of catastrophe. But without believing it is in our power to forever prevent it from happening, if our global cap on emissions is agreed. Now, the author has made a statement that is very lively and controversial. The author goes on to encourage doing whatever we can to mitigate disaster, reduce greenhouse gases, invest in green technologies. But he makes a final statement at the end of his article. He says, there's no simple solution and we should see climate change as a challenge that we seek to manage if unable to control and to end. Now, flip that over. Let's take this psalm and let's begin to transform our own minds. And imagine today if you were to start from the pivot point that God is in charge. No matter what the problem, no matter what the trouble, God is there. We can't tell what God what to do. And we don't tell God what he can't do. God is God and we are not. So transform our minds to be reminded that in the midst of the fear that we might have, when earthquakes come and the mountains crumble into the sea and the oceans roar and foam and mountains tremble as waters surge, transform your mind as Romans chapter 12 verses 1 and 2 says, don't be conformed to what you hear around us in the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. God is our refuge and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. You're probably wondering, it's been quiet for a moment. We've moved to Sila. To just think, are you ready to have your mind transformed? To no longer be conformed to a restricting worldview, but rather being transformed into a liberating worldview. We want to move to the next few verses. And as we move to the next few verses, I invite you to turn to Psalm 46, and I'll have my wife read again from verses 4 through 7. A river brings joy to the city of our God, the sacred home of the Most High. God dwells in that city. It cannot be destroyed. From the very break of day, God will protect it. The nations are in chaos, and their kingdoms crumble. God's voice thunders and the earth melts. The Lord of heaven's armies is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. Let's start with that last verse. If you were watching in that first verse, and as you jump ahead, those of you that have this in hand in front of you, to the end of this chapter, you'll find out that there's a chorus that's constantly going ahead. It's what you sing at the end of each verse or begin with, as you'll notice in the first verse. The Lord of heaven's army is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. We do not need to fear. The Hebrew word used for among us in this last verse, verse seven, the God of Israel is among us. The Lord of heaven's armies is here among us, is the word Emmanu. Now, it may remind you of another word, Emmanuel. God among us. God is with us. In times of trouble, remember that God is present. The nations can be in chaos. Afghanistan can seem to be a place of horror. Haiti, a place of unrest. And even our own country, living through a disputed set of values as we move to an election. Somehow, in the midst of all this noise and thunder, God's voice is louder. And regardless of what scares us, our champion is beside us. Let's read the first verse of this section. A river brings joy to the city of our God, the sacred home of the Most High. God dwells in that city. 
it cannot be destroyed. If that reminds you, and you're already thinking ahead to Revelation 22, verses 1 and 2, it brings on the same image as we think of a river of eternal life. These verses speak about a city that will not be destroyed and that lasts forever. It's a bold picture that we come to by the time we finish this. Some of our kids are gamers. In team video games, it's always good to be with a protector, someone who will keep you, someone who will be beside you and be with you, keeping your back. They're just there. No matter what comes your way, they're there. Now, in life, we have an even better protector. No matter if cheaters or hackers or the world around us is trying to fix the game, your protector has it all under control. God is present. Let's continue into the next section. Psalm 46, my wife comes to read again from Psalm 46, beginning in verse eight. Come, see the glorious works of the Lord. See how he brings destruction upon the world. He causes wars to end throughout the earth. He brings the bow and snaps the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be honored by every nation. I will be honored throughout the world. The Lord of heaven's armies is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. For all our desire to remind ourselves that God knows and that God is present, just because someone knows something about another doesn't mean that that person will do something. And that's where a past record is always appreciated. We often choose our sides based on who is on that side. And we want the best person to be on that side. One who has a track record. In this passage, you'll notice it says he causes wars to cease, to break the bow, snap the spear, burn shields with fire. He brings destruction upon the world. It's an interesting word, destruction, in Hebrew. It talks about ruining something, bringing feats of prowess, bringing all that the achievements that someone thinks they have made to nothing. For all the great plans that other people have made, God brings out a consternation on those who are watching and those who are trying to advance in battle. He just basically stops it. At God's word, a war ends. Weapons of mass destruction, bows and spears and shields become useless. God is active. This is more than just thinking about, oh, there's a God out there somewhere. There's a God right here who's acting in our lives. This is the transforming of our minds to be reminded that we can say God knows us, God is present, and God is active. Be still and know that I am God. Now that word really brings about a number of different images. And the Hebrew language is just full of images. And so this image particularly is an interesting one. We have translated it and use it in songs. Be still and know that I am God. Be still really has the picture or image of sinking into or just relaxing. Now, we know that 
well, we must be responsible with our life and what we do and where we go and how we do things. God is telling us that we also need to relax. Come to a place where you don't have to feel right now you have to make an active adjustment to the problems that are around you. You don't have to fix things right now. What you have to do is sink into the water, relax, let go. And I think as one author stated, we might even use the term, give your desire to fix problems some slack. Live the easy life. Be still and know that I am God. Now, those of you that have been with me for the last few months that I know that I've asked people to join, a club called the Yada Yahweh Club, getting to know God more than just having information, more than just going through the actions. It comes to a point of knowing God completely and intimately. That's what we need to do. Be still and know that I am God. God says, I'll be lifted up and people will know me in other nations. They're going to know me throughout the world. Be still. Know that I am God. And now we sing the chorus of the psalm once again. The Lord of heaven's armies is among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. As we complete this sermon this morning, there's a good word that I believe we could use and should be using, Deuteronomy 6. And the priests were often asked in the Old Testament, say something to the people each time that you finish talking to them. Tell them, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May he be gracious to you and give you peace. That blessing I pray for you this morning. Now in our regular church services, we would have at this point uh, what we call holy community, the opportunity just to sit back, to talk with each other, and uh, mention things that are going on in our lives. A number of you uh, know the announcements that are things coming up, everything from our Goose Festival, where we're planning to have a parade, and uh, even the fundraiser we're hoping to have as well. September 12th, after the morning service, we're hoping to get together with the leadership and talk about the things that are coming over this next little while. We also will have opportunity to hear from others as we spend time together and so I invite you during this week, since we can't be together in holy in our usual holy community time, contact others, talk to them, let them know that you're thinking of them. And in many ways, this becomes the community that we need to be very much a part of. I'm going to continue with a few more thoughts, but they're more just talking with you. And hopefully in the talking and in the listening, we'll hear a few things. One is that uh, a, a thought I shared with some of the people at Caleb recently. Very interesting. We had been talking about growing old. And I took a reading from a fellow by the name Mark Galley, who has just retired. Mark, very interestingly, has been is a writer. He'd edited a major magazine, Christian magazine, for a number of years, and now that's done. 
He's no longer editing. And he's made this statement about his retirement. He says, I spent 40 years with great aspirational goals, aspiring to do things, getting ahead, trying to figure out things, to, to read as much as I could, to understand, to let my mind be full of. And he says then, now that I'm retired, I realize that for all that I tried, maybe I was missing something about knowing God. Maybe I was aspiring to know about God more than to know God. Our passage today reminds us, and reminds me, as <laughs> and the Caleb gang that I hung out with this past while, perhaps one of the greatest purposes in our lives, one of our greatest aspirations in life, isn't necessarily that we're constantly doing, doing, doing. I talked with 80 and 90 year olds and they know that they can't do, do, do. Yes, for many years, they were the backbones of their church. They were the ones that make sure things happened. They could be the ones who were fixing church buildings and repairing them or having potlucks and making sure the food was on. They had so many things. And now there's very little that they can do. And they sometimes feel like, am I wasted? Am I insignificant? When it comes to that question, I turned to them and I said, do you realize that in all this passage, God talking about taking care of everything and us being part of this and seeing a world that is better than any other world that we've seen before because God's in charge, we don't have to fear. It will be everything that God wants. Do you realize in the midst of those aspiring, that aspiring, God comes and says, be still and know that I am God. Perhaps our greatest purpose in life, as Jeremiah 29 verse 3 and 4 says, our greatest purpose in life is to know God intimately. When the 80 and 90 year olds heard that, a light bulb turned on in their lives. They don't have to feel insignificant. Their goal is to know God. And in knowing God, make him known. I wonder if sometimes we get so carried away with all the things that we do that we need to stop and to rest and to know God. We need not fear. Cast all your cares upon him, for he cares for you.